It's been just over a week since Outpost Infinity Siege launched and it's time for me to share my knowledge so strap in as we hit as many hints, tips and tricks as we can to get you up and running. And if you like this one then we can dive deeper into the game in other videos. Now let's go! This one isn't so obvious when the game tries to show you new things are either found or researched to unlock them. This is not true, the story itself is a blocker to access many things for your outpost. So get the story parts done ASAP, especially up to the snow missions. Not only will you find blueprints, but you will also open up different areas, features and NPCs of the home base. So if you see someone talking about a feature or a place in the home base that you don't have, you probably need to do more story. Also speaking of finding things, did you know the base itself has blueprints in it too? I'll have another video very shortly showing the locations of all the ones that I've found so far, so be sub so you don't miss it. But after you've found everything, running around the base might not be a good use of your time. Not only can you teleport using the map, you can also skip the map entirely and go straight to the key parts of the game that you need, like research or the outpost builder via the menu at the top of the map screen. This will save you so much time. Did you also know that these important areas can also have operatives assigned to them? This will level up that facility and provide you with buffs and or discounts. The amount of level up you get is based on two things. First and foremost, the operative's combat rating. You can easily boost this by taking those characters and chucking on some gear that you have lying around and not using. The higher rarity, the better. And secondly, some characters will have traits that you can unlock and boost within their personal ability tree. These are generally specific to one area like research, for example. Now I know you want a nice easy way to get new operatives as well. And while recruit tokens can be a rare loot drop, you can just buy them pretty regularly from the shop for just 300 credits. This makes them really easy to get, maybe a little bit too easy. But only if you visit the warehouse regularly. Why? Because you must have picked up some loot tagged as valuable by now. Things like bronze cups or comic books. They're all loot that is meant to be sold and you can zip through it all here. Bonus tip here is to sell things you also don't use. For me, this meant flogging things like the MREs, chocolate bars, grenades, drinks. If it wasn't gear or crafting material, I've probably sold it. Which is why I'm sitting on a tidy 200k credits at the moment. I just went on a 50k spending spree. The shop is not to be underestimated. To get all those walls, batteries, material storage parts, you are going to need a ton of the most basic components. Now instead of having to farm these forever and ever, you can just pick these up in bulk in the shop. And it's pretty cheap too. Not only that, did you know you can refresh the shop listing by just paying for it? No waiting around to do another run if you have the credits. And this refresh doesn't go higher than 300 credits a time too. Another hugely useful feature that you can only do back at base is removing Zen. These are the capsules that power up your gun. So if you've found an inserted one on a run that isn't working for you, or has broke your build, or you just used it to save on your limited inventory space, then you can remove them here. Although only the buffs can be removed. The skills then are in there for good. Also once unlocked, I highly recommend testing out your Zen changes in the firing range. It's a lot quicker than finding you dropped your DPS on a fresh run and needing to complete it before you can get back and fix your build. Going back to saving space though, in the early days you will desperately want to bring back as much as you can, but your base may not be ready for that. Outpost is all about managing risk and reward, and this is clearest in the final extraction day when you are choosing what to bring back. The threat meter at the top will indicate what's coming, with lighter colours being very easy troops and the darker red colours being the bosses with medium units being the more orange colour. If you see any blue spots in that line, then that will also be a short break. But what you really need to know is that this bar is based on the credit amounts of the items you're bringing back. And now there are several tips here. Firstly, is the credit worth of an item shown is just for one of that item. So if you have an item like this and you have a 10 stack, then that stack is worth 10 times that amount. So you may want to do some quick maths in your head to find out the most valuable items you have for the space that you're taking up. Why? Well, because you can still access your backpack here. 
You can absolutely cheese some of the extraction by carrying items through that final mission in your backpack, and these do not count as adding to the threat meter. So throw all of those most expensive items that you have in your backpack while still leaving room for ammo, and maybe a turret part drop if you can, and save yourself some heat off that final escape. Something the game also doesn't teach you is that you can use the turret config on any turret. Here you can set its range and target priority. This is useful early on since all weapons are not at max range by default. And this is massively useful later on when you can set missiles as highest priority for your Seawiz guns. However, this can be a huge pain to set up each run. And while these settings do carry over between different levels, they don't carry over between different runs. But don't worry my friends, there's also a solution to that that many of you have missed or didn't know about because you can access these settings within the Outpost Designer itself, and these will become the standard for every run. So you'll only need to adjust for certain boss fights if you need or want to. Just don't forget to check the settings when you rebuild or change the layout of your base. Now, in all of these missions, you will of course find certain POIs with puzzles. These can be the magnetic puzzle, the basketball puzzle, or a drone catch. With the magnet, you just need to attach this anywhere on your base. Recently changed in the patch from just the tower. Once attached, you need to go back to the device and climb the tower next to it. Climb out the window at the top, go round the outside, grab the ball, and you need to throw this into the top part of the machine. This is easiest when dropping down from the tower, but can be done from the ground too, should you miss. Oh, and that's another point. There's no full damage in this game, so jump away from any height. Once activated, this line should change to a blue color and add power to your base. The basketball challenge is a fun one because it has up to three rewards. To get the most out of it though, you're going to realize you don't have the balls to unlock it all. And by this, I mean you need to head round to the left where you should normally find one or two extra balls, either sitting in this spot or sometimes hiding on the floor behind it. Also, if this map has had a trader POI spawn, there's sometimes an extra ball around that spawn area too. If you find five balls total, then you are golden. First, get them all in the inner area for easy pickup and position yourself in the middle and just start throwing. The timer starts on your first score of a hoop and you need to get as many points as you can. As you do so, three lights will light up from left to right and you can stop when the third one is lit or you can keep going to try and beat your last high score if you remember it. The first two prizes are different boosts offered on the two consoles in front of the machine. The third will be the locked cabinet that will have loot inside. As an added bonus, this puzzle will also net you some power for your base too. The drone catch is an easy one. Once up the tower, you can crouch out onto this ledge and just time a jump and spam pickup to grab it. These drones are sold for time used to complete research early and come in different rarity levels. But there is also another drone that you can catch or at least try and kill. This bigger drone hides itself in a building and I've seen some people try to wait outside and shoot it down. But the building itself is easily recognizable. It's small, nearly square and has a little thing on top as well as a hole that you can jump through if you want. But if you position yourself on the side with the stairs and just run in quickly, you can pick up a battery from the first side of the drone, throw it immediately and pick up another battery from the other side. And if you're super quick, there's also loot on the nose of the drone to pick up in the form of a small care package. These batteries are sometimes used to activate terminals in a level, but their main use is to put into your generator on your base to give you more power. Be careful here since the power is given over time, so don't insert one and leave the level before it finishes giving all the power from it. And if you still need power, there are also these large batteries that when used, just straight up give you power. More power means more missions, and more missions means more loot. You can also use this power to activate abilities on your base, like using drone recovery or the item scan. Which brings me to said item scan. If you're having trouble locating the mission item to bring back to the outpost tower, a scan will only cost you five power. It will mark all items not picked up for a short while on your HUD. Note that any unopened cupboards, lockers, or containers of the like will show up as pink because loot is decided on and spawns when opening them. So it could be anything from a common to a super rare item. 
otherwise all other loot should have its rarity colour and another great use for this is after the final extraction is complete but before you board the transport to finish the mission is give the area a quick scan if you've got any power left. You might find extra research points or items that you may have missed. Lastly, while your starter character's abilities may feel underwhelming, it's mostly down to your currently weak gun setup. Its main use is to save you ammo, and provided you upgraded the traits for them, it can save you a lot of ammo. And since these abilities are time based, having a rapid fire setup on your weapon with these abilities will save you the most ammo, allowing you to really dish out the damage. So don't sleep on these abilities and use them as much as you can. Now if you found this video useful, you can thank me with at least giving it a like or a share, but feel free to subscribe for more sci-fi gaming content or send a super thanks as a tip. And I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.